you're Ralph Boner? Boner. <laughs> <laughs> Expectations subverted. <laughs> No, I did not have a single theory about how the show was gonna end, or who Evan Peters was gonna end up being, so you can save your strawman chanting, <laughs> You only say it's bad because Jack Schaefer subverted your expectations, <laughs> because I had none to begin with, you insufferable MCU stands. Now that that's out of the way, let's dive in. Why can Wanda walk around without being arrested? She was a fugitive on the run before being snapped away, and Jimmy Woo makes it clear that the Accords are still in effect. But that's in direct violation of Section 36B of the Sokovia Accords. Oh, Endgame and Falcon and the Winter Soldier fuck this up as well, but just because it happens in other places does not excuse it being an inconsistency. A bit of world building explaining why Team Cap no longer has to fear imprisonment wouldn't have been so hard, would it? And is it just me, or does the mere premise of this show feel like a contradiction to this line in Endgame? You know, I wish there was a way that I could let her know that we won. She knows. We both do. I can't be the only one who read this as Wanda coming to terms with Vision's death after winning the war and realizing it was necessary. Or did no one ever tell her this scenario was the only one where they undo the snap out of 14 million? Now, don't get me wrong, there are big issues with the way things played out in Endgame. And just because a character says it was the only way it could have happened does not excuse the bad writing. But if we're going off of what the previous narrative established, Wanda should know by now that Strange let Thanos take the Time Stone and go to Wakanda because... There was no other way. If fucking Darcy was told really specific details about that day, then an Avenger that was actually involved in the conflict should have been informed too. Okay, whatever. No need to get hung up on this because I have no solid backing, right? Besides, even if she was at peace, her grief was reignited when she saw Vision's broken body and his house plans. Right? Why the hell is Sword taking apart Vision's body five years after his death? Coincidentally, right after everyone was snapped back. He should have been taken apart, studied, memorialized, repurposed, or buried no longer than a couple months later. Why aren't the Avengers or even the Wakandans in possession of Corpse Vision? Why didn't Tony make an effort to repair or securely store him? Who slipped the house plans in Wanda's car? How did they know it was her car? And why did Sword have this piece of paper? Did they inherit his possessions as well, or was the paper inside of Vision? None of the windows are even fucking open. Wouldn't this land have been resold and built on by now since both of them died? Hello? Did you guys forget about world building and your own timeline? There is no reason this all happens the way it does at this point in time other than to give the show an excuse to exist. Remember in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Jimmy Woo was the strict, by-the-books agent hellbent on catching Scott breaking the law again so he could send him to prison? An agent with a straightforward goal of following rules and punishing those who break the law without letting emotions get in the way? Come on, Wu, I've got three days left. Why would I try to escape? Sorry, Scott, but rules are rules. We got him, sir. Pim and Van Dyne are in custody. Seriously? Yes! He barfed. Like, a lot. Like a lot, a lot? Yes! Forget it, move aside! Then why is Jimmy upset when Hayward brings up the fact that Wanda was against the Avengers at some point and caused collateral damage? Jimmy never gave a shit that Scott never hurt anyone when trying to help Steve stop Zemo from doing more despicable shit, which was already public knowledge by the time of the house arrest. Priority upload from Berlin, please. The fake doctor is actually Colonel Helmut Zemo. After a terrorist attack at the United Nations a week ago, the suspect has since been apprehended. Jimmy doesn't care what the intentions or circumstances are in the event of a crime. Scott was an accomplice to aiding a fugitive. Jimmy should be furious that a powerful magic user physically and mentally enslaved thousands of people and put a barrier around them. But it's been five years since Ant-Man. It makes sense that he's different now. Yeah. Jimmy Woo never goes through an arc that establishes or even hints that he'd take things easier now. By the end of the movie, he's still eager to arrest 
against Scott again someday. I'm not saying it should be impossible for Jimmy Woo to have a change of heart. I'm saying it's not shown, and the five-year time jump is not an excuse to skip over character development, just like it wasn't for them. At the end of the season, Jimmy's got a smile from ear to ear for getting promoted and says nothing about Wanda's escape. Uh, where's Darcy? No, no, can you say where's Wanda? Say where's Wanda? Where's Wanda? <sighs> I'll get to the ending later. Vision is an unheroic dumbass in these scenes. He disables the mind control of multiple people, and to calm them down, he just puts them under agonizing pain again, instead of keeping them free and banding a bunch of them together to confront Wanda. Why do this? Because they were being a little loud? Also, how does this work on Agatha if she's doing her own thing and has just been playing along? The visual effect happens, but Agatha isn't actually under mind control, remember? Uh. Do you want me to take that again? Should we just take it from the top? And she has no idea that Vision can even do this. By the way, why the fuck would she ask her that? The people under mind control aren't able to break character and she knows this. So she's just exposing herself for no reason. Oh, there actually is a reason, you see. It's a little mystery box for the audience to speculate on, but at the cost of consistency. Also, Agatha came out here in her car because why? Was she hoping Vision would decide to go explore and got astronomically lucky that he spotted her car and decided to approach her? I don't know how I did it. <sighs> you don't know how, and yet you expand the barrier in the same episode a few minutes later. If Wanda knows she can change the size of the barrier, then why the fuck doesn't she shrink the hex when Vision and her kids are with her and just keep a small hex around their house without enslaving anyone from town? Wanda knows these people are in pain as early as episode 5, and she knows they had different lives before and had connections outside of Westview. So give it back to them, you bitch. I thought you cared about innocent people. Nah, it'll be fine. Why did this drone change to an era-appropriate version but not black and white like Monica did? Did the writers ignore consistency so that Wanda and the audience could have a mystery box moment? What a SHOCKER! How is Monica free thinking when she goes into the hex twice? How about the beekeeper? When Wanda expands the hex, the sword agents and Darcy physically and mentally turn into a circus crew. At some point, Monica wants to go through the barrier a third time, even though she's aware she could just be put under full mind control, which she describes as excruciating, terrifying, a violation. But she just says, Nah, it'll be fine. Wait, why do they say she was being mind controlled and how does she know what it feels like if she wasn't mind controlled? She was playing along with it because she broke character. <sighs> Can you keep track of your own show, please? Anyway, Monica is even told that contact with the barrier is rewriting her fucking cells, and who knows what horrific abnormalities or life-threatening side effects she could get from this. Oh, she still does it and gets generic superpowers and a magic energy wave detection bullshit plot device so she can immediately figure out what's mind-controlling Pietro. Which, by the way, why is it only because of an easily removable necklace? Is this supposed to be how Agatha gives Pietro super speed too? Wait, Agatha can give people superpowers? What are the limits to this? Can she give herself super speed and other powers? Oh, uh, whatever. We all know this random superpower bullshit was done just so she can start fighting crime alongside Captain Marvel in her sequel. Then there's the entire finale, but I'm saving that for its own section, so moving on. I swear, Agatha and her backstory only exist to have an unnecessary reason to call Wanda by her comic book hero name. Remember when Natasha and Carol never had an origin for their hero names? And one day other characters quickly mentioned them and no one gave a shit? Black Widow released Hydra files to the public. I got a hot day with Black Widow coming up. What about Thor? Off-world. Captain Marvel. Don't invoke her name. They kind of make this clear when they have Hayward Force in the question. Back up, Jimmy. Does Maximoff have an alias? No, sir. No funny nickname? Not a one. Anyway, I guess the reason why the Hydra experiment was successful on Wanda is now because she was coincidentally the chosen one all along. And not because her sheer hate and will to get revenge on Tony Stark was so strong that the stone didn't kill her like Ultron tricked us into believing. We wait for two days for Tony Stark to kill us. I wondered why only you two survived Strucker's experiments. 
No, I don't. And the reason the bomb never went off was because she used a probability hex despite not knowing what that is or that she could do that. And not because the bomb was defective. Mary Sue? But now what about Pietro? If Wanda was just randomly born with the same powers as some witch cult and is prophesized to become evil, confirmed by the fact that the Mind Stone gave her a glimpse of the Scarlet Witch, then where the fuck did super speed come from for her brother? Why does he have a completely unrelated power and not the same? Same ones she does or just none at all. What did he see when he touched the stone? Is there like a cult of speedsters out there too and Pietro was coincidentally born as one of them? By changing Wanda's origin, there is no longer a linear connection between hers and Pietro's. And personally, you've lost my believability and investment. You see how this retcon is pointless and retroactively creates unanswered questions for a movie from six years ago? Speaking of super speed, why does Tommy get it if Pietro wasn't born with powers like Wanda was? If we're going off of the fact that Pietro obtained his power purely from the Mind Stone when he was in his 20s due to the show forgetting to retcon his origin, then it should be impossible for Wanda's genetics to carry a super speed gene. Oh, Tommy got super speed in the comics you see, and comic accuracy obviously means good writing. Monica is being held hostage by Pietro. She looks at some papers and finds out his true identity. You're Ralph Boner? Boner. <laughs> What do you mean he isn't Peter Maximoff? This character was supposed to tie the X-Men and MCU together. All that together. for a boner None joke. of the theories are true. But this was supposed to be the beginning of the multiverse. Now, now, you man babies. You're only upset because Jack Schaefer subverted your expectations. I am sure there is a meaningful and valid reason why they chose to make the reincarnation of Quicksilver, a character who was wasted once before, a random nobody whose name is a pee, -pee joke. Fake Pietro. Why bring why bring that actor back? That's that is the overwhelming question happening. Yeah, just out of the blue, no idea who the person is. Wrote, sent me this tirade like, "Didn't you guys learn from Iron Man three with the fake Mandarin?" And and my first take takeaway was that was my favorite part of Iron Man three. Yes, when Ben Kingsley came out of the bathroom, was like, "Don't go in there." I was like, "I was this is amazing." Um, Trevor, the fake Mandarin, oh, was yeah. fantastic. Playing with expectations, turning things around is always enjoyable. Oh god, there isn't. She actually just Ryan Johnson the shit out of Pietro. <laughs> However, I don't actually have a problem that he turned out to be a nobody since his true identity had no bearing on the plot to begin with. He was just another meat puppet, controlled by Agatha. If he turned out to be the Quicksilver from the X-Men universe, then the plot would probably be different to introduce the multiverse and have an effect on the greater MCU. But I totally understand the outrage, and frankly, I think it's warranted. You can't blame the fans for expecting this after casting Evan Peters coincidentally at a time where Marvel is about to introduce the multiverse and tease them with subtle references alluding to the X-Men Quicksilver. I mean, hell, he kind of has X-Men Quicksilver's personality. WandaVision writer didn't want Quicksilver cameo to feel like a prank. Yeah, I think you did. Why the fuck would you even look to Iron Man 3 for inspiration? Do Marvel employees think every idea in their movies are good ones? Of course. As I've said before, Yondu is dead and will stay dead as long as I'm involved with the Guardians. His death means something to people and I'm not about to diminish that. Take notes, you hacks. Project Cataract turns out to be the creation of Cum Man, a one-to-one -one fully functional replica of Vision down to his memories. Except they've been blocked by a firewall. Now, how and why he came to exist is just as important as his existence, so what happened? Allow me to recap Vision's initial creation and the time he was to have the Mind Stone removed to put things in perspective. In Age of Ultron, Vision required five things to be created. Vibranium, the Mind Stone, the Cradle, an expert in artificial tissue generation, and an insane amount of energy. I guess six if you want to include Jarvis. In Infinity War, four things were required to safely remove the Mind Stone from Vision. Wakandan technology, an expert in using said technology, a lot of time, and a flawless performance, since There are more than two trillion neurons here. One misalignment could cause a cascade of circuit failures. 
got it. Apparently, Cum Man was made from corpse vision, so at least we understand that they didn't start from scratch. The beginning of this show takes place nine days after Wanda witnessed Sword taking corpse vision apart. In that scene, we can see that vision is in shambles. The way he's being taken apart appears messy and unorganized, which is understandable since no one's ever dealt with the inner workings of an extremely sophisticated vibranium android before. Because he still has the hole in his head, we can conclude that this is the first time Sword is taking apart Corpse Vision. Nine days before Cum Man went online. Nine. <laughs> then we get this lovely exposition, aka Massive Issue, from Hayward. We took this thing apart and put it back together again a million times. Tried every type of power supply on the sun. <laughs> And then to power him up, Sword somehow extracts Wanda's magic energy wave surrounding a drone she disabled like a day ago. And the energy waves have somehow remained around the drone this whole time, and it's enough to bring Cum Man to life. <laughs> Oh, and remember that the whole point of Cum Man's creation was to neutralize Wanda and destroy Vision? Sword didn't even know that Wanda was a threat and inside Westview with Vision until Darcy and Monica made those discoveries. About two days ago. Meaning, Sword rebuilt Cum Man a million times, tried every power source, ended up flawlessly reconnecting every wire and internal component with zero misalignments, successfully filled the hole in his head with no access to extra vibranium, restored and blocked his memories, created a laser weapon powerful enough to take on the fucking Mind Stone, and gave him the ability to fly and phase. Without Wakandan technology, Technology, the Cradle, the Mind Stone, or help from anyone with significantly more knowledge on anything. In two days. Goddamn, that's beautiful. Cum Man shows up right after Wanda annihilated Agatha with a car, and she produces a little cum herself. Cum Man tries to lay a smooch on her, but malfunctions halfway through and cracks her skull. No, I didn't say almost, he actually cracks her skull. <laughs> now, Cum Man's objective here, which by extension is Hayward's objective, is... Wanda Maximoff must be neutralized. Just so we're clear, neutralized does not mean kill, just render them harmless. I've heard the criticism that this is a Doc Ock tentacle blade moment since Cum Man could just blast his forehead laser right through Wanda's face and kill her, and like I said, that's not his goal. But I've heard this counter-argument to that. Wanda is the most powerful Avenger, so that's not an issue. Wanda having overpowered telekinetic and psychic abilities does not mean she is Luke Cage. She has the same bodily vulnerabilities as a regular human. Agatha should be fucking dead here because the same applies to her. I never thought that would have to be explained. But here we are. Going back to the head crush, after the sound design makes it blatantly clear that Wanda just experienced multiple fractures, she suffers no brain injuries whatsoever. Vision kerplunks into Cum Man. By this point, Vision knows all about Wanda's fake reality in the Hex. After the tone-deaf talk between him and Darcy, he finally decides to convince her to put an end to the town's suffering. I should have told you everything. I know why you made this world, but this... I can fix it. Can you? 12 seconds later. Vision, this is our home. Then let's fight for it. Uh, what? I thought you both just agreed to take down the Hex. You know, the thing that'll save everyone at the cost of your fake home? But now you want to fight for your home? <sighs> Can you guys keep track of your script? If this is a not ready to say goodbye moment, then tell Cum Man that you're gonna take down the Hex soon. Vision spends the entire battle not telling him something that potentially could have prevented the entire thing. Back at Sword, Hayward tells an arrested Jimmy, No one's gonna care once I've eliminated Wanda Maximoff. I'm sorry, eliminate? I thought you were going to neutralize her. Did Hayward change course, or do the showrunners not know what the word neutralize means? If his intention was to kill her, then yes, Cum Man should have melted Wanda's face off right here. Also, no one's gonna care? You think none of the Avengers are gonna care if one of their members was assassinated just because Vision was resurrected? You dumbass. The two guards behind Jimmy Woo don't see him crouch and reach for this phone and struggle to put it in his back pocket 
pocket while handcuffed. He also coincidentally had a pin in his back pocket that he uses to unlock the cuffs in one second. Agatha gives Wanda a history lesson on the Scarlet Witch and reveals that she just wants to take away Wanda's powers because she doesn't deserve them. She proves this by breaking a bunch of citizens free. Apparently, all the children in Westview were locked in the rooms, preventing contact with their parents and the outside. Uh, how did they eat? Where did they go to the bathroom? Are they all malnourished from not eating for days? Wanda finally has some semblance of compassion and opens a crack in the hex to let people out. No, she doesn't shrink the hex, she opens slivers in the barrier, running around the town's perimeter. Meaning she just made these poor people run for miles so they could escape. The people who are no longer under mind control. What the fuck were you thinking? Why would the people who are already free want to escape now? They are leaving Westview, leaving behind their homes and the other 3,000 plus citizens who haven't been freed, including their own children. Later we see the slivers have gotten significantly bigger, meaning Wanda is actually removing the entire hex. So again... Why are you running? Up in the sky, miles above the ground, Vision and Command zoom around playing laser tag. As the hex dissolves, Vision is weakened and Command man's laser blasts him back. Vision plummets, and out of all the places in Westview he could land, he coincidentally and conveniently lands next to Wanda. Tommy had a vision of his MILF in danger over three minutes ago, and despite having left immediately with super speed, they coincidentally arrive after Vision does. This all happens so that Wanda can see the lack of a hex will erase her fake family. So to preserve them, Wanda closes the gaps in the hex one minute and 45 seconds after it was opened, meaning the people of Westview did not get to escape and started running across town for nothing. <laughs> Sword shows up and Come Man arrives. I guess he just forgot his objective until now. The fake family rips off a better superhero family, and Sword holds them at gunpoint. Instead of reassuring them that the Hex will be taken down like you'd expect him to do, Vision says this. Listen boys, your mother and I never really prepared you for this. But you were born for it. <laughs> Uh, you know you don't have to involve your children in this, since you can just... Yay, back to fighting. Two couples with the same powers. How imaginative and exciting and creative. Vision and Command get a chance to breathe, and instead of telling Command the Hex will be taken down, Vision engages a bullshit philosophy lecture. But I'm not the true Vision. Only a conditional Vision. I request elaboration. Why? I am Vision. So Vision is not actually dead. Again. Come Man is out there with his memories. So now Wanda's upcoming quote unquote sacrifice and Vision's two death scenes are retconned. As I can guarantee Wanda and Come Man will get together in the future and pick up where they left off. The stakes are non-existent. Well, not yet actually. We haven't gotten to the fight between these two. Wow, that's quite a neat trick. Where'd she learn how to do that? Oh, right, she didn't. So if she could just pull it out of her ass, then why hasn't she done it before? Would have been pretty useful in Civil War to avoid getting arrested, don't you think? Hayward decides to shoot two fake kids with superpowers for no reason. Actually, I have no idea what he was shooting at because Monica shows up out of nowhere and stands in between them, taking all the shots. The bullets were going towards the open gap in between the kids. <laughs> Actually, one bullet accidentally goes towards Billy, and Monica stares at it as it flies by her. I say again, Monica tracks a bullet from a gunshot with her eyes. Monica has super speed. I hope they stay consistent with this power in the Captain Marvel sequel. Also, if you have super speed, why the fuck did you just watch the bullet whiz past you instead of blocking or grabbing it? Billy doesn't have super speed, so if it hits him, which it shouldn't by the way since the bullet is at your eye level, you'll have a fake child's blood on your hand- oh. He caught it. Billy was able to see this bullet going towards him and react to it. 
Billy has super speed. You get super speed. You get super speed. Everybody gets super speed. The shot of Monica turning around makes me want to cry. The bullet and Hayward are to her left, with the bullet being at boob level, even though it flew past her on the right at eye level. Fucking hell. Now Hayward probably should have stopped shooting as soon as he saw Monica step into the field of fire, right? But he didn't, because apparently he didn't give a fuck if he murdered his own employee in cold blood. When the clip runs out, he looks upset and confused that he couldn't keep shooting. This isn't even a character anymore. Hayward went from a by-the-book side character to a one-dimensional antagonist to an aimless, bloodthirsty psychopath. This soulless husk doesn't even react to Monica turning into jello right in front of him. Hayward books it in his Hummer and Darcy comes out of nowhere to stop him. She was out of sight, off on another street, and somehow knew Hayward was gonna back up in front of her at this moment. God, forgive me. Up in the sky, Wanda shoots balls at Agatha and tells her to take her powers. She doesn't want them no more. No more. I don't fucking know. Agatha can only sap Wanda's powers while she's using them, because I guess Wanda is a magic juice pouch that only depletes if taken by someone else, but not when she uses magic herself. So Agatha starts sucking Wanda dry and turns her into a raisin. This would have been totally hot under different circumstances. Agatha prepares to give one final blow, but only queefs out dust. Turns out, the magic balls that missed Agatha missed on purpose. Wanda was creating runes on the barrier to turn the hex into a no magic zone for thee, but not for me. Yes, the runes that Agatha created in her basement that she vaguely explained and Wanda briefly checked out. Because we all know that memorization is easiest when it's just a quick glance while under stress and anxiety. And we all know that execution is best when no study, practice, or demonstration took place beforehand. Mary Sue? Did you even pay attention? Wanda didn't make the same runes, so she didn't have to memorize anything. <laughs> I tell you something, I tell you a secret. That's even fucking worse. You're telling me she created her own random designs that just so happened to work and have the same effect as Agatha's runes? Mary Sue? Thanks for the lesson. In a given space, only the witch that cast the runes can use her magic. Wanda pulls out an Uno reverse card and sucks Agatha dry, even though Agatha can't use her magic anymore. Rules for thee, but not for me, right? The writers also forgot that magic is required to fly, so Agatha should be plummeting to her death right now. They float down and Wanda punishes Agatha by indefinitely turning her back into the nosy neighbor. Although, I thought the hex was required to keep the mind control on autopilot, which is why people turn when they're inside it. Except Monica. So, I don't know how Wanda plans to maintain this once she takes it down. After finally ending it all, the family walks home. All the sword soldiers have been restrained this whole time, because Billy is an overpowered little shit who's also mastered magic without any learning or practice. Oh, you want me to talk about how emotional this moment is and its themes? Fuck off, nothing abstract stands when everything concrete is rubble. Not to mention, Wanda's actions are indefensible, so it's hard to care about what's left of her relationship with her fake husband. I say again, she did nothing four episodes ago when Vision confronted her about Norm being in pain and separated from his family, telling her this is all wrong. She just tried to get him to shut up and claimed she had no control over any of this, despite having complete control over the size of the hex. Grief is not a get out of jail free card for this shit. Like her or the show all you want, but do not defend her actions. Twitter as always has been a cesspool recently with Wanda Stance pathetically defending her, saying moronic shit like, The town was boring and dusty. She did them all a favor. She made the town better. They are all ungrateful. Then when you present them with straight references from the show proving them wrong, When you let us sleep, we have your nightmares. Tell him I love him. I'm not to come back here. We feel your pain. I'm exhausted. Oh, if you won't so let us go. <laughs> Just let us die. They accuse you of not paying attention. They try to make fun of you for getting pressed over fiction while they are defending fiction like their life depends on it. When they are cornered, they will go as far as this show isn't about the citizens, so it doesn't matter. And I don't care about what happened to them. Seek help, you fucking idiots. Wanda returns to the town center for some reason. Just to talk to Monica, I guess. 
They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. Why? Why do you write like this? Wanda didn't sacrifice shit. She created the problem that only benefited herself and then solved that problem at no tangible cost or risk to herself. Her family was fake, dummy. It wouldn't change how they see me. Why are you concerned with your image? Why didn't you say, It doesn't change what I did. Given the chance and given your power, I'd bring my mom back. Holy fuck, are you saying you also would have enslaved people to bring your mother back, you psychopath? There is a lesson to be learned here, and you completely ignored it. Hmm, reminds me of a recent movie that also had a female lead who resurrected a loved one at the expense of someone else's freedom and refused to acknowledge the moral implications of this. I'm sorry for all the pain I caused. Fucking tell that to everyone around you. Monica wasn't even being mind-controlled. I don't understand this power. But I will. <laughs> uh, but you do. Sure, Vision and the Hex were created accidentally, but then you intentionally expanded it, opened it, shrunk it, and you created massive runes, vanished, astral projected, and summoned the Dark Hole with no learning or practice. Mary Sue? Wanda flies away, and the episode ends. No joke, my jaw dropped in disbelief when I watched this for the first time. The abysmal conversation between Wanda and Monica is the last one this show has. The FBI doesn't arrest Wanda, we don't even know if they want to arrest her. She doesn't turn herself in, nothing, zero consequences. I think it's a beautiful scene. We're not trying to let Wanda off the hook at all. The daggers that she's getting from every townsperson as she walks through town should clearly show she's not being forgiven, and she won't be forgiven by them. She understands that. Oh, my mistake. She won't be forgiven by random people who have no authority over her, who she has no personal connection with, and who will most likely never appear in another MCU installment. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> She fucks off to the middle of nowhere and conveniently finds a cabin to live in. I guess if she wanted to, Wanda could just summon another hex where she is right now. In fact, why doesn't she do this now that she's all alone? What an asshole move to these people to not do it in the optimal circumstances. Or why not just pull another spell out of your ass that allows fake vision to exist without a hex? You can do this with Agatha, apparently, so might as well try. She reads the Darkhold because... Why? I thought you told Agatha. But I don't need you to tell me who I am. Agatha was parroting what the Darkhold says about the Scarlet Witch, and after telling her to fuck off, you embrace the suit and proceed to read about what Agatha was telling you. What. The. Fuck. Also, the Darkhold is in another language, so how are you even reading it? Well, at least Wanda finally came to terms with letting go of her family. Again. I mean, Vision will return in the form of Cum Man, of course, but at least her fake children are gone. And I can't wait to see Wanda struggle with issues other than family and grief in Season 2. <sighs> Motherfucker. And that's WandaVision. What a colossal heap of muck. No wonder people were saying the finale was the worst thing the MCU ever put out. This show can't follow its own rules, it can't fucking decide what its rules are, the world building is ass, characters are stupid, it disregards the MCU timeline and its previous narratives, stakes were ruined, deaths are retconned, no real consequences for the protagonist, and the majority of it is built on contrivances, coincidences, and bullshit plot devices. The earlier episodes with mysterious elements are retrospectively ruined, knowing they were internally inconsistent and led to the payoffs they had. By the end of it, I felt like I was watching a CW product. Remember guys, this is what Daredevil was cancelled for. <laughs> Who's a popsicle? You fucking know who he is. You were there for his birth. 